Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, so in this video I thought I'd talk a little bit about um, some of the things that I wish I knew uh, when I started out in the electrical industry uh, way back in the day, back in the 90s. And one thing that I wish that I knew was just how many types of electrical work there are out there. And I'm not just talking about domestic, commercial, industry, I'm talking about specific sectors within our industry. You know, things like uh, healthcare, or maybe hazardous locations like petrol filling stations, or the water industry, or data centers. And there are so many different specific types of electrical work out there, so much so that if you do a search on uh, on the internet for a, for an electrician's job, you will find jobs that you are technically qualified for, um, but when you read through the job advert, you see that they're looking for specific experience or specific competence in a, a type of electrical work that, that they do. And there are so many times that I've been in this situation where you're looking for a job and you find something that looks ideal, but then when you read through the job advert, um, they're looking for something really specific that you need experience. In. And so one thing that I would say to anybody starting out in the industry is that if you if you're somebody who would like to get experience in doing different types of electrical work, or maybe even if you would just like to have uh, broader options when it comes to finding a job, it's a really good idea to get a job with a company that does lots and lots of different types of electrical work so that you're going to get that broad experience. Um, of course there's nothing wrong if you want to do a specific type of electrical work, if you just want to do uh, domestic work for example, there's nothing wrong with that, um, but it's just worth bearing in mind that there are a lot of jobs out there that require a specific experience in a specific type of electrical work that they're looking for and so it's a really good idea from my point of view um, to to get as much experience as you can in different areas in the industry and if you're just starting out I strongly recommend getting a job with a company that does lots and lots of different types of electrical work to give you that experience so that's just my point of view on that another thing that I wish I knew was 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 just how, how many updates that we would have to do in our qualifications and you know I remember starting out in the 90s it was the 16th edition back then um, and then when we got through to the sort of early 2000s we'd had a couple of amendments by then and it changes uh, obviously the wiring regulations and it's really really important to keep up to date with these things and I, I remember more recently when the 18th edition was published um, I remember going to do the exam when, when it came out um, and I realised when I was sat there that it was the first time I did an exam in 10 years which was 10 years almost to the day since I did the 17th edition which was back in 2008 so there's a lot of changes that go on in our industry we, we work in an industry that is changing all the time and you know more recently we've had um, amendment 2 of the 18th edition there's a lot of changes in there things like prosumers installations for example and um, so a lot of changes we have to keep up to date with so really really important to uh, you know keep up to date with these things so that when you do have to go um, and do an update um, for say a new edition whenever that may be obviously you know you keep up to date with the latest changes that are going on and there's a lot of uh, resources out there you know I talk a lot about um, changes in the wiring regulations on my channel I've done a few videos on amendment 2 um, and so if you haven't seen those I'll put a link at the end of this video um, so there's all sorts of things like that another thing that I wish that I knew uh, when I started out back in the day is just how complicated it can be working with DNOs and arranging new electricity supplies or service alterations. I think that you're, you're, if you're new in the industry, you, you will have seen in the, the on-site guide. There's it describes in there the different uh, responsibilities between uh, the electrician, uh, the DNO, the electricity provider, and the different types of work that we do. Um, but that really doesn't sort of sum up just how complicated it can be. And, and I think well calculating maximum demand for example can be difficult and that's another thing that I talk about on my channel I'll, I'll put a link at the top of the screen if you haven't seen that already um, so I really wish that when I started out there was a more of an emphasis on talking about how we go about arranging a new electricity supply the information that we have to provide of course that's changed now there's more information we have to provide in terms of if you've got any renewable installations on a site that you're working on you, you really need to let the DNO know about that also any EV charges the DNO need to know about so that there's all this information that needs to be provided to the DNO as well as calculating the maximum demand and going through the process of applying for a new connection is something that when I was uh, training, I mean, I'm, I'm going back 20, 25 years ago, so it's, it's a good while ago, it, there wasn't really that much of an emphasis on that. And I think that's something that, that I would have found helpful back in the day. If that's something that you're interested in, I'll put a link at the top of the screen for that. Um, so th there are a lot of things, as I say, that I 
wish that I knew when I started out in the industry and it's a bit of a learning curve that I think that we all go through. Um, another example is, is pricing electrical work and that's a difficult one uh, to talk about because obviously how you price a job is entirely up to you. It's not something that I could uh, uh, you know, tell you how to do. There's a lot of variables uh, you know, depending on uh, you know, where you work, what your overheads are, what your costs are. Um, you know, if you work in London for example you might have very different overheads to if you're working out in a country like, like where I live out in the country. So it, it's a, it's a difficult one and it's a learning curve that I think that we all go through. Um, one, one thing that I wish that I knew perhaps when I was starting out was how to how to present a quote uh, to a customer and how to put the information on the document to make it clear. Things like um, bills of quantities, schedules of rates and stuff like that, things that you pick up over time if you're uh, starting out as an electrician and you're, then you're moving on. Maybe you're starting a, a new business or you know, maybe you're going to work for a company doing a sort of a project management type thing it's knowing how to do that kind of work that is really really useful um and, and it's as i say it's different for different organizations and and I'll, i don't think it would be right for me to make a video on how to price electrical work for example because uh, you know it's really up to you how you price it. I think the one thing that I think is useful though is how to present the information to a potential customer. Obviously it's a long time since I trained as an electrician way back in the day, um, so maybe it's, it's different now. Maybe the colleges do talk more about those sorts of things now. Um, so if you have any um, other things that you wish that you knew when you were starting out in the industry, let me know in the comments. And if you haven't done so already, please click over here to subscribe to my channel.